Steve with SNS Mowing Service reading Ed Milet's Max Out Your Life, Chapter 5. Max Out Your Body, Highest Possible Energy. I believe it's one of the utmost importance to take our take care of our physical body. It provides us the energy, confidence, and strength we need to win in business and in life. When we are fit, healthy, and active, we feel our best. Feeling good is important because our body is the temple of our soul and our mind, which is the source which is which is the source of our strength and power. Keeping a healthy physical routine is one more way you are keeping a promise to yourself. It's a daily validation that you are worthy and value yourself enough to keep your promises to you. Having a healthy physical lifestyle gives you longevity and mental clarity, as well as building your self-confidence. It's not about you looking like a bodybuilder or a supermodel. It's about keeping a daily routine that makes you feel your best. And it gives you the highest possible energy. I'm so excited for you to be because as you be, begin to transform your body, you will also be transforming your life. You've learned the skills to change your thinking, beliefs, and how to build strong supportive habits. Now you're taking all of that and applying it to getting in your best physical shape, which will reinforce your confidence, change your thinking, and overhaul your life. It's all tied together. No matter where you are on your fitness journey, whether you are just starting out or are a seasoned pro, these tips can help you take it to the next level and get the results you want and deserve. My 10 tips for getting your body to its elite performance state. Number one, hire a trainer. Go to the gym and hire someone to train you. They will teach you how to do the workouts to best to your best capabilities and how to do it correctly. They will also hold you accountable, which will help you make exercise a lifelong habit. Number two, subscribe to fitness periodicals and social media. There are some great magazines such as Men's Fitness, Muscle Magazine, Shape, Women's Fitness, etc. that provide education, examples, and support. Additionally, a recent study showed the average person checks their smartphone 80 times a day. Following fitness influencers on social media and listening and watching podcasts are convenient ways to stay connected with your fitness mindset and goals. Number three, you cannot out-exercise a bad diet. You must be focused on what you eat as much as as much or more than your physical training it's it feeds your energy performance strength and recovery it's crucial to getting the results you want number 4 drink lots of water it's 70% of your body so it should be 70% of what goes into your body you need even more when you work out Number five, lighter weight is better. Assuming you aren't trying to build mass. Don't lift heavy weights when you're starting out. You're not impressing anyone. I'd rather have you lift lighter and do it correctly. This is important for beginners to prevent injury. Once you've mastered executing the exercises correctly, you could you can add you can then add more weight number 6 morning i train in the mornings 
because it gives me increased energy throughout my day. Everyone is different, but I noticed optimal results with morning workouts. Number seven, stretch. I stretch 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after my daily workouts. This prevents injury, keeps you from getting sore, and increases flexibility. Number eight, music. I always listen to music or inspirational podcasts to get to my peak performance state. You should consider listening to my Max Out podcast and other influencers during your workout. Making a strong playlist can help tap into your peak performance. Studies show that upbeat music can increase endurance by as much as 15% and it serves as an excellent distraction from your outside, from your side ache. (laughs) Number nine, five and five. I work out five days a week and do five resistance exercises on each body part I'm targeting that day. Those of you just Beginning, need to start with a simple plan and routine that you adjust as you progress. Number 10, measure it. Measure the amount of weight you use, the number of reps you can do. Record your your weight, body fat, and track your progress. Without a point of measure, it is not possible to determine where you need to Course correct. If it's been a while since you stepped on the scale or faced your measurements, don't look at it neg- 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 negatively. Be excited to record them so you could compare your results. Everyone loves a good before and after picture. Be excited to create your own. Listen. To more details at edmylet.com podcast, Ed's Fitness Regimen. That was chapter five. Seems like a short one. We're going to go right into chapter six. Max out goal settings. Deadlines and details. Set goals as if you possess them Be very specific with your goals. The three main elements necessary in achieving goals are specificity, specificity, accountability, and visualization. Specificity is the first crucial step in goal setting. Your mind cannot go to work when this task is vague. Saying, I want to be rich, is not a real goal. Identifying the amount of wealth you want, when you will achieve it, and what it will look like, creates an uh, actual target you can hit. The clearer it is, the more likely that your mind, body, and soul will go to work on creating those things in your life. The reason so many people do not achieve their goals is because they did not get specific and clear. People don't like being specific because it commits them to a target. They prefer to be vague so they can decide if they hit it or not. The second essential step is accountability. There is power in saying the goal out loud and power in sharing it with someone that can hold you accountable. When life's distractions take you off track, having another person outside of those distractions can connect you back to the goals. Be accountable to a friend, family member, or mentor who can support you. The third step is the visualization of your goals. This can be done by utilizing vision boards, posting your goals list throughout your home and office, or simply focusing on them in your mind repeatedly. 
If you are a praying person, you should pray about them. If you meditate, there are various types of meditation that allow you to focus on them. You should set a time aside each day at the same time of the day to visualize your goals. The more you focus on it, share it with others and visualize it, the more familiar your brain becomes with it. The more familiar you are with your goals, the more likely you are to identify the paths, people, and tasks needed to achieve them. Ob obsessively create positive habits and you can change and master any area of your life. Our minds love to gravitate towards the familiar. Once you set your goals and reasons, then you've got to write out a detailed plan of how to do it. Then review your goals, reasons, and plans every day. Your why is 70 times more powerful than your how. Do not undervalue the importance of writing out your plan and reasons. Structure serves as a map. If you're trying to navigate to a destination you've never been to, you will need a map to keep you on course. Your reasons or your whys will fuel your perseverance when you come across obstacles along your journey. If you have a goal to send your children to college, you should list a detailed savings plan that includes where to save, how much, and what you expect to have by a certain date. It should be accompanied with a picture of your child to give you a visual reminder of why you stay the course. When an obstacle such as an unexpected expense for your car or a break in your work de decreases your income, you will you you still find a way to fund that college dream for for your child you cut out expensive coffee eating out and other luxuries to ensure your goal is not sidelined for a temporary situation goals are not promises they are commitments it's not your reasons not your goals that keep you from giving up let me let me repeat that. I, I screwed that up. It's your reasons, not your goals, that keep you from giving up. When someone when something becomes important to you, your RAS will find it. Your mind will immediately go to work bringing you the resources and opportunities to help you achieve those goals. This is literally how and why uh, your obsessions become your passions. Make a real decision. How do you know if you've made a real decision? If you followed it up with immediate action. The minute you decide something, take quick action. The only way to change your life is to make real decisions. Identify emotional reasons. You must have an emotional attachment to your dream. Build up the reasons that define why your goal matter, goals matter. Your RA, RAS can be supercharged with powerful reasons. Those reasons will elevate the price you are willing to pay and strengthen your will to win. I believe the stronger your will to win is, the less likely you are to sell it. There is no price you won't pay to achieve your goals. This is the part most people miss. You must have emotional, compelling reasons to keep you in the hunt for your dreams. Once you've made those reasons your passion, they all become they become all the inspiration you need to fulfill your goals.
For more details on goal setting, listen to the Design Your Life podcast at edmylet.com slash podcast. Touch your dreams. Give yourself the chance to experience some of the dreams you have. If there's a place you dream of living, you should visit that the area and become familiar with it. Eat at the local restaurants or take your family to the park or beach near the homes you dream of living in. Or maybe you have a car you dream of owning. You should test drive it so your mind becomes familiar with it. Take a mini vacation for a couple days with your family someplace beautiful and a bit out of reach for you financially. I'm not saying to spend the money you don't have to pretend you are somewhere you are not. I'm suggesting you allow yourself to experience the type of lifestyle you dream of so you can become familiar with it. The more familiar your brain becomes with your dream, the more you are, you believe you belong in them. Again, your thoughts are primarily the same ones over and over. You need to replace old ones that don't serve you with the ones you want to become your reality. Go touch your dreams. Alrighty. That was another short one. We're going to keep it going. Chapter 7. Max out your will to win. Can you be bought? Can you be bought? Is your will to win for sale? Most people allow their win, will to win to have a price. Their dreams have a price. Their children, children's dream have a price. With enough rejection, enough pain and setbacks, most people will relent, selling their will to win. By doing this, they are selling out not just their dreams, but their destiny and their family. They will sell out because the price got too high. People who are winners negotiate their price in advance. They know what their dreams and their destinies are worth long before it ever gets tested. Those that have not yet committed don't know what that price is. That is why it's so easy for obstacles to persuade them to give up and sell out. They will call it something else. They'll say, oh, it wasn't for me. The timing wasn't right. I didn't have a mentor and didn't know what I was doing. They'll have plenty of excuses as to why they sold their dreams, but the truth is that they sold out. They couldn't handle the heat. The price got too high, and they weren't ready to pay it. That's the truth. When I was broke and coming from a place of scarcity, I would walk into the store and ask, how much does it cost? I would look at the price tag first, it's the same way in life. When you are approaching your life and your dreams from a place of scarcity, you are always asking yourself, what's the price? You are always weighing if the risk and work are worth the reward. When you do that, it's constantly draining your focus because you're always renegotiating the price when research sources are limited the focus is placed on price cost to see what is affordable I want you to focus on worth not cost if you were shopping for a birthday gift you likely have an idea of what your max dollar amount to spend is and if you think about it, you'll base it on who you are buying the gift for. We're going, we're going to get very honest here. 
Let's just say you're looking at a beautiful scarf as a gift. If you are buying it for a colleague at the office, you flip over the tag to evaluate, evaluate if that cost is in line with what you are willing to spend. If it's not too high, you will quickly move on to find something in the range you've allotted. Uh, hold on. If, if it's too high, you will quickly move on to find something in the range you've allotted. Now, if, if the gift is for your sick mother and you are not sure exactly how many more birthdays she will have, you don't flip that tag to inspect the cost. You just buy it because you know her happiness is worth whatever the cost of the scarf. If your income level is low, is too low to provide the quality of life you want for yourself and your family, what have you done to change that? Could you fight for a promotion? Start a side business? Learn a new skill a new skill set to increase your ability to earn a higher income? It's absolutely 100% in your control. So why do you stay in the same spot? Most people are not willing to put in the extra work to, be be to better themselves. They fall into the pattern of working a job they don't like for just enough money to pay for a handful of bills and a modest lifestyle. A wage is nothing more than a bribe. A business owner has paid someone to work on his or her dream instead of their own. Instead of going for what they want, they allow their scarcity mentality to dictate what they ha can have. Life should be about chasing what you really want, not expecting what is left over. If you obsess over the cost of your dreams, you will never pay the price for them. You will just keep re renegotiating them. Higher elevated thinking is focusing on worth, not cost. What is your child's future worth? What is the security of your family worth to you? Your own happiness and quality of life. What is that worth? There are no numbers imaginable to answer these questions. The answer is that they are valuable beyond measure. Yet, you continue to flip over the tags of life and assess their cost. If you truly, if you have truly committed to your dreams, there is no obstacle, price tag, too big. You will find a way to overcome it because from the start you are ready you already decided the worth of your dreams. Nothing can make you quit. Your will to win is not for sale. Conversely, your will to win must be guarded against success. As you progress and achieve milestones, do not allow that pro progress to cloud the vision to your ultimate goal. Small wins create the illusion that you are successful and you start to take your foot off the gas. You stop investing the effort that caused you to succeed and eventually you begin to regress. Once you sense this, you may start to alter the goal. You'll tell yourself this is good enough and convenience yourself that you never really wanted the initial goal. You settle for less than your dreams. This is why your identity is so important. If your result exceeds your thermostat, you will cool, up, cool life down and rationalize your way back to your true identity. Don't settle for just enough money, accol accolades, and short-term success. Don't stop working hard and doing the things that bought you success. 
the real achievers develop themselves and discover innovative ways to elevate their strategies. From the beginning, make the decision not to be bought with failure or success. Set your goals so that you know what the ultimate version of your dreams look like and then let nothing distract you from achieving it. For more details on how to figure out your recipe for winning, listen to my podcast on iTunes or go to edmylet.com slash podcast and listen to Unlocking Your Success Code. Final thoughts. My intent with this book was to share the steps I took to produce results in my own life. I broke them down into the main subjects of habit, habits, mind, confidence, fitness, goal setting, and will. There is still much more to explore on our road to success, but the details here should serve as a strong start. I have a few more thoughts to share that I feel are important. Chasing butterflies. We've all had that butterfly feeling before. You know that feeling I'm talking about? That tickle in your stomach? Maybe as you stepped on the field of a big game in high school, when you sat in the waiting room for a important interview, or when you walked down the aisle of your wedding. The uncertainty of conquering your biggest dreams will give you butterflies. When is the last time you got those butterflies? If you're not experiencing butterflies as you work towards your dreams, then you're not chasing your true destiny. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of times you get to experience the feeling of uncertainty. When when we are young, we actually chase those butterflies. As we get older, we tend to avoid the feeling of uncertainty. All the greatest memories in your life happen right after the butterflies. In fact, God gives us those butterflies to let us know we are on track to our dreams and our destiny. Butterflies are memory makers. The key to a rich and fulfilled existence is a max out life full of those butterfly moments. I have a feeling when I meet that ultimate version of me, we are going to discuss our butterfly moments. Put yourself in situations where you'll be uncertain. Don't be afraid to get uncomfortable. The feeling of being alive often comes with the feeling of uncertainty. It's what It's what makes you step up your game and truly experience life to the fullest. When you begin to take your life in a new direction, some people are not going to support or believe in you. If you're addicted to what other people think, you're going to fail quickly. There are going to be haters and people will be jealous of you. Deciding to change your life, whether it's it be your body, relationships, or finances, means you need to accept from the very beginning that not everybody will be on board. All millionaires and billionaires were once laughed at. I was laughed at and rejected. I had family members ridicule me. I had people try to talk me out of my business and tell me to get a real job. It's the price you pay for chasing greatness. Anyone chasing a big dream will face ridicule and rejection. Even when you win, people will talk bad about you. Get over it. There are three things that contribute to the caliber of your life and the emotions associated with it. Number one, the caliber of your relationships. Number two, the caliber of your beliefs. Number three, the caliber of the questions you ask yourself, i.e. your thinking. Your life is like a movie. 
Most of our beliefs are acquired during our childhood when we're young and defenseless. Our parents and their beliefs primarily influenced our beliefs and shaped our adult mindset. If we are not aware of our beliefs, if we are not aware of the beliefs that don't serve us, they begin to take control of our life's script. How many people do you know who are in the career their parents wanted them to be in? Or, pe or people who are doing whatever everyone expected them to do? Or what society told them to do? Most people go through life with a script someone else has written for them. You could change the story and script at any point. Change it now. In your life, as with any good script, the main characters matter the most. The main characters are you and a few core supporting cast members, not the extras, not the background people. Have you ever watched the end of the movie and watched the credits? After all the leading characters are listed, there becomes a laundry list of extras that really aren't integral to the story. They are extras. Cab driver number two, bouncer number one. They don't even have names. No one even remembers them. Yet most people allow the extras to dominate the script of their lives. We care too much of what the extras think about us. When you realize that you are the lead character in the story of your life, you unleash a force within within you that incre that that is incredibly powerful. You and God get to write your own script. Once you take control of that script and step into your leading role, the one you've written for yourself, your subconscious mind will go to work on attracting the people, the perfect supporting cast, and attracting the perfect set. Think of who is in your main cast. Picture their faces right now. Are they your kids, your spouse, your parents? There's only about half a dozen people of these people in our lives. The ones who really matter. What will they say about you when, you, when your story is over? You decide. You are writing the script. Don't be surprised if some of your main cast members question your decisions and push back on your dreams. You will be challenged to defend your choices and stand, stand your ground. This will not always be easy, but it will strengthen the roots to your dreams. Other people don't control you or your life, nor do they control your beliefs or emotions. Learned helplessness is the crippling mindset that other people are the ones doing things to you. But the reality is that everything in your life is happening for you not to you. All the experiences, trials, obstacles, and struggles you've gone through have happened for you. I mentioned in my first chapter how, in hindsight, the end of my baseball career was a blessing in disguise. That if that didn't happen, my life would have gone in a completely different direction. Hindsight is the understanding of a situation or event only after it has happened. One of the traits I've developed over the years is the ability to have that same hindsight clarity while in the present. In other words, I have developed the, the ability to see the benefit of an obstacle while going through the adversity. The normal reaction of adversity is to be frustrated and allow it to slow your progress, or worse, create doubt. If you could learn to see the benefit of the adversity at the time it is happening, you will start to separate your level of thinking from average to elite. You get what you expect. At the end of the day, you get your standards. 
Raise your expectations of yourself and hold yourself to the highest standards. Setting the bar high for yourself keeps you sharp, leaves an elevated impression on others, and develops your confidence. Average people tend to look for shortcuts and give minimum effort. When, you're min when you maintain those high standards, you separate yourself from average. Don't let the average set a ceiling on your capacity. Don't let the fears of others be your fears. Don't let the lower expectations of others set the bar for what is possible for you. Make decisions. Set standards. Take actions that will get you closer to becoming the best version of you and the person you were born to be. You have it within you. I'm no different than you. I wasn't born with a magic gene that you don't have. I just wanted to win so bad that I didn't allow anyone or anything to steal my dreams. Procrastination is a thief and fear is a liar. You were destined for a life of abundance and prosperity. Your maker didn't put you here to just get by. You put in the work, so you expect to win. Never again allow fear to paralyze you. You've made no decision until action is taken. As I said in the beginning of this book, I'm chasing down the ultimate version of me. The day will come when I get to be face to face with the destiny version of me. I want the satisfaction of knowing I spent a lifetime chasing down this man. And that in the end, I caught up with him. That he and I are identical. That, that I challenged myself. I took risks. I dug deeper. I put in the work. And I gave it all I had. I used every ounce of blessing God gave me and left nothing in the tank. It's, it's the driving force in my life. I want to I want you to push yourself now more than you've ever have in your life. You have so much more in you. You have gifts and talents that you've likely not tapped into because you just didn't know how. Maybe you just needed a different environment to utilize them or a mentor to help you discover them. Maybe you just needed someone to believe in you. Well, I believe in you, and that makes too. Let's go. Take immediate massive action and go win. It's my prayer that you feel a call to change in your soul and come out swinging. That you picture your life and the lives of your family living their true destiny. Now is the time to become the person you were destined to be. The ultimate max out version of you. Last page here is just, uh, says, Ed Milet, join the conversation. I'd love to connect with you, share your comments. And a whole bunch of spew. So there we have it. Steve with SNS Mowing Service finished a book. Small book, 199 pages. Ed Milet, Max Out Your Life. SNS Mowing Service. We read a book. Let's keep it going. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.